Okay, so without further ado, I think we'll make a start. So my name is Callum Ryder. I'm the, the marketing manager here at Raytech. And great to see some new names on the on the webinar today. So it's always nice to see to welcome to welcome to everybody. Um, so today we're really going to be focusing on maintenance, and the, the title of the webinar is how to save money with maintenance friendly AX lighting. Um, so quickly just give you an introduction, take you through the um, the agenda, what we're going to cover today. Um, but there is also a a question and answer section at the end um, so there's a, there should be a little um, hand raise icon which you should be able to ask questions for or um, or, or raise, a, raise a hand during the presentation and um, if I see any pop up during that I'll try and answer them if not we'll just leave those all to the end so um, but please feel free to leave any questions and, and we'll, we'll do our best to answer them. So agenda of what we're going to cover today. So we're going to look at maintenance requirements of, of AX lighting, what's actually required, what's mandatory, and what, what might be um, expected you over the lifetime of a luminaire. We'll look at the different types of AX lighting, how we can categorise those, and, and what signs you should be looking for to highlight which of those are, are easy to maintain. We'll look at why maintenance friendly design is so important, what the impact of that is, and what um, what the, the cost implications could be if you don't have a luminaire which is easy to, to maintain. The environment, environmental impact, which is obviously a growing global concern in terms of our impact on the environment, so we'll look at how maintenance affects that. We'll look at warranties and return procedures. Um, perhaps not something which a lot of people give, give too much thought to other than the, the headline duration of the warranty, so we'll look at a little bit more detail at that. Um, and what some of the, the key things to look out for are on, on warranties and return procedures. And finally, any other considerations such as installation, which might help to increase ease of access and also with that, the ease of maintenance and costs and that sort of thing. So they're the, the key sort of areas we're going to cover today. So let's just start with the, the actual requirements of, of maintenance and what you have to do um, as part of any AX lighting installation. So hazardous area lighting um, always will feature special features uh, on the luminaire, which, which renders the luminaires suitable for the, for the applications themselves. Um, and because of those special features, maintenance or routine inspection is, is mandatory um, across every luminaire which is, is installed. And that's in line with the, the British standard, which I've listed on the slide there. Um, so just because the luminaire appears to be working correctly, um, doesn't mean these special features will be will be preserved over the lifetime. Um, so there's various different inspections which have to have to take place over the course of the lifetime of the luminaire um, in order to ensure that hazardous area rating is preserved and is still safe for its environment. But the purpose of these routine inspections is really to highlight the, the need for any additional maintenance which may be required. Something we're going to look at in a little in a little while. But just staying on the theme of, of routine inspection, what's actually involved. So we get different types of inspection um, with various different levels of, um, of involvement. It depends whether visual, close or detailed. Um, generally for a routine inspection, the, the majority of that is going to be visual, so slightly more straightforward. Um, and they'll be required at different stages. So uh, initially when the luminaire is installed, and also periodically throughout the, the lifetime of the luminaire but there may also be sample um, inspections as well where uh, one, or, one or a group of luminaires is taken to represent the entire um, the entire installation which may be slightly more detailed but the, the key thing here is that the a routine inspection is unlikely to require the unit to be opened up any significant work to be taken place like i say it generally tends to be more of a visual inspection um initially and over the, the lifetime of the luminaire um and understanding this that the unit's likely to be opened up generally means that the design of the luminaire um some of the categories we're going to look at in a little second is, is unlikely to have a huge impact on the, the, the complexity or the duration of the of the, the inspection which is required but the, the real cost will come from unplanned maintenance. So like I said, these, these inspections are designed to highlight any other areas of maintenance which may be required or any additional work. So that's where the real costs um, will come from. That's something we're gonna focus on. The next couple of slides. 
But what exactly is unplanned maintenance? So we can classify unplanned maintenance as anything, any procedures which take place outside of the usual routine inspections which we've just covered. So as with any electrical product, you know, there, there is a risk of failure. Um, highlighted some of those there, so things like PSU or driver failures, the emergency batteries, as, as with any consumable battery, is likely to degrade over time. Um, Correct lenses may come from impact of um, something on site, as a series are obviously quite um, high risk and may have things which cause damage to the luminaires of the lifetime. And the key thing to mention here is a lot of these are certainly things like PSU failures or driver failures is likely to require the unit to be opened up for further repair. It's more than just a visual inspection like we talked about in, the, in those routine inspections earlier. The cause of these could be a fair and component, but it could also be a, a user error or something which, which happens as a result. Um, something the user's done from from experience here at Raytech we know that things like over voltage isn't isn't totally uncommon um and so you know if, if these failures are going to happen it's, it's vital that um it's vital that maintenance can be carried out easily and uh, just to, to point out again that the nature of hazardous area applications mean that the likelihood of, of required of maintenance and the higher risk of the of the application means that the the importance of this is really magnified. Um, so let's just look at some of the reasons why the, the ability to maintain easily is so critical. And really this comes down to two, um, two main, main areas. So simply put, um, failures or the need for repair has two major implications, and that is downtime and cost. I mean, these are both areas which we're going to cover in more detail later, but um, an easy to maintain luminaire helps to reduce downtime and reduce cost. Um, and these are two areas which which are really important in terms of consideration um, over the lifetime of a luminaire. The critical thing also a point for this is that even for a unit covered under warranty, these these factors still still apply. So while the cost of components or the replacement may be covered under warranty, the, the process of shipping the unit back or being without life for, for a sustained period of time is going to happen regardless of whether the fault is covered under warranty. So these are really important things to consider when selecting the, the, the luminaire. But how do we know if, the, if a luminaire is easy to maintain or not? What are the key things we need to look for? So generally, we can categorise hazardous area luminaires into three main categories. We'll quickly run through these now. So the first one is traditional luminaires. These probably can be maintained on site, but it's it's more difficult and and slower to, to do that and to maintain. Um, the majority of these traditional luminaires are designed to contain the explosion rather than prevent. That's down to the protection method they, which they use the hazardous area rating. May mean they have more special features to preserve, things like um, flame paths, which have to be maintained and are, are more complex to do so. And it may also be that, that spare parts are in shorter supply to so things like fluorescent luminaires. We know that single pin fluorescent tubes are coming harder to come by. So if existing luminaires are installed with these parts, which are hard to obtain, again, it's going to make maintenance slower and a longer period of downtime. I think a lot of you, though, who um, are probably on this webinar are already aware of the sort of benefits of LED. So rather than thinking about traditional luminaires, we probably want to focus more on the different types of LED luminaires. We've categorised these into two, two main, main areas. So sealed for life LED luminaires. Um, the key thing with, with the sealed for life luminaires is it's, it's, it's factory seal, which is critical to the, to the luminaires EX certification. Um, this means they can't be opened up for maintenance, and, this, and it's like I say, the seal is really important for that obtaining that certification in the first place. So opening it up would obviously uh, would obviously void that. So that means the, the unit has to be returned to the manufacturer for maintenance. It can't be done on the site. And then we have modular LED luminaires, which in contrast have no factory seal. Um, it means that the luminaire can be opened up for maintenance, and the maintenance can be done on the site quickly and easily. 
So there were main sort of categories of luminaires. So going forward, the rest of this present, the rest of this webinar, we're really going to focus on these last two categories. So a seal for life LED luminaire and the modular LED luminaire. Chances are, like I say, that if you if you're on this webinar, then you probably understand the benefits of LED. So that's what we're going to focus on uh, for the duration. So now we want to understand. So now we now we do understand that the modular design is, is easier to maintain. Um, we need to understand exactly why that is. So essentially it's down to design. So um, modular luminaire is designed with maintenance in mind. It's designed to be um, everything about it in the way the luminaire is housing and the, the components within it are designed for maintenance and designed to be maintained on site. So spare parts can be replaced, removed independently, you can see, independently you can see from the, the image there with the, with the PSU being removed. So that's the key behind it. How is it possible? Um, generally, the uh, modular e, modular luminaire will be EXE certified, which is which is increased safety. We talked about a traditional luminaire, which is tend, tends to be designed to contain rather than prevent, um, whereas an EXE luminaire is, is the opposite of that. So it's designed to to prevent an explosion rather than contain it. Um, that gives the manufacturer more freedom in the way they design the luminaire. It means that the ability to open it means they can design ways in which the unit can be opened up inside it and they don't have to consider things like flame paths, um, which are more complex to maintain. And they don't rely on a factory seal either to, to, main, to maintain its AX certification. And it also gives you greater flexibility in terms of access. Um, so it's something we're going to cover slightly, slightly later in the presentation about um, about how our uh, access can be improved through a modular design or remote mounting of the key components, such as power supplies. Um, that's just something to consider, which we'll obviously we'll cover in a later slide. So why is ease of maintenance so important? So like I said, we're going to focus on the modular versus versus seal for life. But just to clarify the, what we've already kind of established, the most significant difference between the two luminaires is that a modular luminaire can be fixed on site and that maintenance can be carried out by the end user, whereas a seal for life unit is going to have to be returned to the manufacturer for repair. And there's nothing really that the, the end user can do due to the importance of that factory seal and maintaining the exhibition of the luminaire. So this is the key difference and this is what we're going to focus on as we focus on some of the areas where we can help to save you cost and reduce downtime. So first you think about transport costs. So these are immediate costs um, which are obtained through, through shipping. Now transporting goods from necessary applications can be can be difficult. EX lighting is, is installed globally uh, but generally and a manufacturer would expect you to return the luminaire to a, to a single location. Um, so obviously that potluck, whether you're, whether you're nearby or whether you've got to ship it across the world. So, um, and all that's going to add to the, the costs, but also the, the downtime and how long you're going to be without light, which just make transport and goods more expensive. And in terms of where that responsibility lies, um, nearly always the end user will be expected to ship the unit back to the to manufacturer at their cost. But in some instances, it may even be um, may also be expected of the end user to to pay for shipping and cover the cost of that to get the unit back to site. And that'll depend on the different manufacturer and what their their terms conditions are. But it's not unusual for the for the manufacturer to expect the the end user to 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 pay for that shipping both there and back, even if it's covered under warranty. So just to summarise there. Modular allows that to be maintained on site. Components can be replaced independently, and spare parts can be kept at a relatively low low cost, especially compared to the cost of shipping and, and getting that unit back to the manufacturer, then back to site again. Um, so, so that's a certainly a cost-effective method of keeping spare parts on site, which allows you to quickly service the service installation. But in contrast, to seal for life luminaire. The nature of having to ship it back to the manufacturer is going to incur high shipping costs, especially with the global nature of where AX lightning is installed. And it's going to cause long delays and long and higher costs to the to the end user. So effectively, what we're saying is that a, a modular luminaire removes the requirement to ship the entire unit back to the manufacturer. And it removes that need for that for that expenditure. Or 
Okay, so, so transport costs are obviously important, but probably the the largest expense associated with maintenance is going to come from from downtime through a disruption cost. Um, so loss of light equals a safety risk. And if that safety risk is um, significant, then it may lead to a shutdown of the of the site. And now, obviously, a shutdown will depend completely on the application and the um, and what the cost associated is, is with that with that downtime for that particular customer. That that cost and that disruption cost is likely to be significantly larger than any other part of maintenance, such as transport costs. So it's really important to consider what the effect of that would be. Again, just going back to modular, because the, those spare parts can be kept on site and that maintenance can be carried out by the end user. It's the speed of maintenance and the speed of restoring that light is much quicker. We're going to look at a little practical example in a second, um, but the speed of being able to, to maintain quickly means that there's less disruption to operations and there's less cost which will be associated with the shutdown or dying or down. In contrast to seal for life fitting, again, there's no, no ability to maintain that inside, has to go back to the manufacturer. The process of returning can be can be slow, needs to longer longer downtimes, higher disruption and higher costs. So there's a you know there's a real difference there between the, the type of luminaire which we're going to look at um, in this next practical example. So in this example, we're just going to consider um, what might happen in the event of a PSU or a driver failure. Um, whether or not this is in warranty or not really doesn't matter, but just to show you that um, even if a unit is in warranty, the cost is still going to be significant in terms of transporting that unit back to the customer, um, back to the manufacturer, sorry, but in also in waiting with the, the downtime of the, of the luminaire. So let's first look at the, um, how this process will be handled for a seal for life fitting as a general guide in terms of length. So firstly, the fault would obviously be identified and reported to the manufacturer. Shipping documents have to be prepared. Um, returns numbers and that sort of thing have to be raised and before the unit can actually be returned. Of course, there's a transport time in terms of getting that unit back to the manufacturer. So there is a transport transit time in there. Once the unit is actually received back there by the manufacturer, an assessment has to take place to um, to identify what the cause of fault is, and whether or not that's going to be covered under the under the unit's warranty. Um, and again, this is why this is going on. It's, it adds to the downtime and the length of time that the, the customer is without light. Once that takes place, the unit can be shipped back to the customer. And again, there's a transit time in there before the unit actually receives it back. Um, and assuming they can do that on the same day, then it's going to be, we estimate, around, around 20 days of downtime. Now, obviously, that cost is going to, cost of downtime is going to differ between different applications. That could be a really significant significant cost, um, which which accrues over that period. But let's compare with the with the modular luminaire and what the process would be for a modular luminaire. So in the same way, the fault would have to be identified and reported to the manufacturer. But the key difference here is that a, a remote troubleshoot can take place to identify what the cause is. Um, PSU failure should be should be quite easy to to identify. Um, so a remote troubleshoot should be able to identify that as the as the likely cause. And because a um, a customer can keep spare parts in stock to service installation, that PSU can be replaced um, from start on the same day, and light can be restored. So it means that the problem can be identified and resolved in the same day. Obviously, there's a significant difference in, in downtime there and the cost which will be associated with that. And just to add to that as well, um, so obviously, there may, still, there may still be a need with a modular luminaire to retain something to the manufacturer for, to identify the cause. And obviously, as, a, um, as an end user, you'll want to know what the cause of that has, that has been, whether it's a, um, a fault of the component or whether it's, a, it's something on site which has caused it. So that PSU can still be returned individually to the manufacturer because spare parts can be removed independently. It means that there's no need to return the whole fitting, and this can be done outside of that, that critical loop where you need to get light restored. So light can be restored quickly, and the, the after effects of identifying what the fault has been and returning the, the component to the manufacturer can still be done, but outside that loop, so you're not being you're not waiting for um, for you know 20 odd days before the before the unit can be or light can be restored. But now I'll just think about offshore applications because um, 
any application which where transport is more difficult, more remote, such as an offshore application, is going to significantly add to this length of time. So the two, um, the two statements there, which are just flashing. So they're the, the key downtime ones. We've estimated around that could be around seven days of additional um, additional downtime as a result of uh, delays in transport because offshore applications tend to be dependent on helicopters and the, the flights of which um, we transport goods on on off site and the flights of which may be limited. Um, so you you depend on when when transport or when they can be made back to shore to get the luminaire off site. Is there going to be available space to, to carry those luminaires back to shore? Um, and also cancellations due to weather. It's obviously of predictable, unpredictable um, environment. So that's all things which can which can add to the downtime. And in in being realistic, it could easily double the, the length of downtime without light and double those costs. So moving on, looking at environmental impact. But like I said, the, the environment is obviously becoming an increasing global concern across everything we do, but that applies to, to maintenance um, as well. So the, the financial cost is important, but we also need to consider what the, the impact of the, on the environment is um, of the maintenance. So simply put, the, the environmental impact can be reduced by being able to fix the luminaire on site. Um, it avoids the, the shipping costs, avoids, avoids the use of potential um, specialist equipment. We mentioned that about the use of helicopters to get things back to shore, it takes that risk away. Um, and it also removes the shipping itself, so it reduces that cost to the environment. Another thing to query as well is what, for, a, for a sealed luminaire, whether or not it can actually be repaired at all. So because that factory seal is so critical to the to the luminaire certification, um, even the manufacturer themselves may be unable to actually repair it. Once that seal has been broken, it may not be possible to, to reseal it. Um, so you have to consider what can happen to that unit um, after the after it's been inspected, the, the actual the process of returning it to the manufacturer may, may solely be for warranty purposes, and to, warranty purposes and to identify what the cause of that has been, whether it be covered under warranty or not. Um, if that unit is going to be thrown away, we need to consider what's going to happen to that waste material, um, as well as the fact that the cost of replacement luminaire is going to be, you know, if, if, the, if, it's, if it's been caused by an over voltage or something by a user error, then the, the user will probably be expected to, to pay for the full cost of that luminaire rather than just a, a component such as a PSC or a driver, and which would obviously be at a much lower cost. And also think about end of life. So uh, an LED luminaire can generally be um, seen as end of life at LM70 when the, the overall output reaches 70% of its original output. Now, for a seal for life fitting, where we're un unable to do maintenance and even the manufacturer may be unable to reseal it, that luminaire is going to have to be thrown away. In contrast, the modular luminaire, um, the LED module can be replaced and to, to give you that to restore the original output, PSUs can replace over the, the lifetime if they needed. It won't render the, the unit, the coal unit, useless. So it means that just like you would with a fluorescent, um, where ballasts and tubes can be replaced, that's exactly the same with a um, with an LED modular luminaire, where LED modules can be replaced and extend the the, the functional lifetime of the luminaire. So now I've just given some thought to, to warranty returns. So it's really important to consider some of the finer details of, of a warranty and the conditions of it. So just think about some of the hidden costs, what you need to think about. So what does the warranty actually cover? Um, so some warranties may only cover the mechanical um, side of things, so the actual housing, um, which is only a very small part of the luminaire and may mean that if things like PSUs fail or a component fails, then that wouldn't be covered. And as well, some variants actually may be excluded from it. So certain voltages may be excluded. Um, so you need to really check if the luminaire that you're actually installing is covered by that headline um, three, five, or 10 year warranty. Return shipping, so we touched upon this earlier, who, where does the responsibility lie? 
Um, so almost in all cases, the, the customer will be expected to return it at their cost to the manufacturer um, if there's a, an error or a fault in the unit. But in some cases, the manufacturer may even expect the customer to pay that return cost back to the site, even if it's covered by warranty. Uh, may may sound crazy, but it's you know it, you need to really look at the terms of the warranty when selecting the luminaire. And repair or replace. We touched upon it earlier whether a, a, lumen, a seal luminaire can actually be repaired and if the whole thing's likely to be replaced. Again, if, if, you're, if you're returning that luminaire and it turns out to be a, a user error or an over voltage or something like that, um, the only choice may be to, to repair or to pay for a whole new unit um, rather than just a component like a power supply, which can be a much, much lower cost. And the other thing to point out as well. Um, fault reports so fault reports are really important um, even if a manufacturer was a seal for life manufacturer was proactive um, and sending a returned um, and returning a, a new luminaire on site as quickly as possible um, we have heard reports that um, customers don't always get a comprehensive fault report and if that fault has occurred because of an over voltage or something on site which is which has caused damage to the luminaire it's obviously really important for the, for the customer to understand what that is um, so certainly at Rare Tech, if we ever get a, a return unit back, we'd always give a comprehensive fault report as to what's caused that um, and to identify what the likelihood um, would be of that occurring again if it's on site or, or what have you. So it's really important to get a comprehensive fault report with any with any return. So some key things to check, just to recap there. So you need to check whether electronic components are covered. Is it just the unit's housing or is it going to cover power supplies? Is that covered in the 5 a warranty as well or LED modules, that sort of thing? So look at the terms of what the warranty actually covers. Look at whose responsibility the shipping costs are, especially if it's a seal for life unit, the, the shipping costs could be significant. So you need to identify whose responsibility that is. What level of discretion the manuf manufacturer has. So the terms in the warranty um, may give a, a manufacturer more power than you'd expect. So it's really important to check the small print. Um, are they going to replace the luminaire? Are they going to send an equivalent? Um, or is that in their discretion as to what you know what the level of action is? It's really important to look at the, the, some of the finer print of a, of a luminaire's warranty. Um, and are there any product variants excluded? Check that the ones that you actually order are going to be covered by that by the, the warranty which the manufacturers lead with in terms of the duration. The key thing here is really that a warranty is far more than just a headline number of years of duration. So whether it's three, five or ten years, the, the finer detail of that and the, the terms and conditions within that light have a, a greater impact in terms of cost over the lifetime of a luminaire than the actual duration. So really important to look at the finer details. So finally, just looking at some other factors which, which impact ease of maintenance and, and help to reduce costs. So firstly, ease and flexibility. Um, so I've got a short video for you in, a, in the next slide, which we'll take you to in a second. Um, but the module luminaire also allows PSUs or key components to be mounted remotely. Um, so not only is, is maintenance designed to be possible to do on site, but it can also make access easier. Um, and access is obviously a really important part of maintenance. Um, Luminaires can be installed in really difficult and hard to access location, hard to access locations on site. So being able to mount PSUs remotely gives you that access easier and means that they can be serviced quicker without the need for specialist equipment. So we've got a quick video in a second which we'll, we'll take you through um, and we'll you'll be able to see that in action. But then there's some other design features as well, which hope can also help to increase ease um, once you actually get to the unit. And things like push terminals. Um, you know, if you again the, the hard to access nature of, of some applications, may mean small things like push terminals, not the need to screw the, the the cables out makes it much easier and quicker for the for the person to carry out the maintenance. Again, single tool access um, is something which should be considered. The, the fewer tools that are required, then the the easier the the maintenance can be. And minimising the number of the bolts and screws that's required. Again, the more that are there, the longer, the longer the time that's going to take, and the more fiddly the actual maintenance is going to be. So it's, it's not, not just about being able to carry maintenance out on site. It's actually you've also designed the unit, so it's actually um, maintenance friendly as well. And finally, is there going to be any additional equipment required? Um, you might see some luminaires which are which 
pretty wired and have a, a fixed cable coming out over them. Um, so there's no dedicated terminal box block um, built into the unit. And that's going to mean that junction boxes, additional junction boxes may be required. Um, maybe the junction box with these units have to be required for, for every fitting. And obviously that's going to that's going to significantly add to the cost of the installation. So just simple things like having a, a inbuilt terminal block to allow you to, to through wire and loop in, loop out is going to significantly um, reduce your overall cost. So always look at what additional equipment is likely to be required for, a, for an AX installation. And again, because it's it has this area, the cost of those are all magnified. Um, anything like a junction box is going to significantly add to that overall cost of the installation. So here's a quick video I mentioned. So this is going to quickly show you the um, the modular design of the Luminet, how we can how we can mount the key components at a, a ground level to make access easier. So this is our high power flood Luminet. So you can see the PSUs can split off. They can be remounted at, at a ground level, um, and the Luminet can also be mounted where it's needed. That gives you easier easier access and easier maintenance when maintenance is actually required. And the access of it is far easier. You're not going to rely on specialist equipment to do so. So finally, just give a quick summary of what we've discussed. So I think the key thing that we've covered here is that downtime is likely to be the, the largest expense, um, and the longer it takes to restore, like the, the uh, restore, fix the problem, the higher the cost is going to be. And the choice of a modular, modular or a seal for life unit is going to have a significant impact on that. So modular Illumina, like I said, can be restored on site. So light can be restored in minutes thanks to the um, thanks to the design of the Illumina and being able to um, keep spare parts in stock. Whereas in contrast, the seal for life unit is going to have to go back to that manufacturer and you're relying on things like shipping and transit times. Um, and it could be tw 20 days or significantly longer for, for some applications before that light can be restored. Um, modular design helps to reduce downtime. Again, go back to that speed of installation or speed of maintenance, sorry, um, and the lower cost. Whereas a seal for life unit, because it's going back to the manufacturer, um, you can be without light for longer and at a higher cost. And also the environmental impact. Um, so by removing the, the need for trans transport and the, the need to ship back, you're going to help to reduce the environmental impact of the loom of the luminaire. Um, but in contrast, obviously the shipping and the the nature of the seal for life unit is going to is going to require um, a higher higher environmental impact, and also the ability of the the waste and whether that luminaire can actually be re repaired or it's just going to be be thrown away and what happens to that waste material. And finally, just a, a reminder, always look closely at the terms of a manufacturer's warranty. So that the headline three, five or 10 years that, you, that a manufacturer may promote isn't always the, the most important thing. The terms and conditions of that warranty and the, the likely hidden costs um, could be far more significant over the duration of the, the lifetime of the Luminaire. So that brings us to the end. Um, hopefully you've that's given you some, some ideas of maintenance that you maybe haven't considered before. Um, I'm going to be hanging around for a little while to answer a few questions if there are any. Um, so I'll just quickly put you on mute for now and then I'll, I'll give you a few minutes to get any questions in and then we'll, we'll come on in a couple of minutes and answer those for you if we can. Thank you.
a question there from from Thomas. Thank you, Thomas. So um, Thomas mentions that the um, the problem with the, with this could be the, in, in terms of how we market it. So why market something which is easy to fix when broken? Um, the products are not supposed to be broken. So so yes, um, it's certainly a fine line between um, ease of maintenance and um, obviously reliability. But um, the nature of hazardous area applications mean that maintenance is going to be required is any, with any electrical product. So I think anyone with an installation of, of luminaires will know that it's, at times maintenance does have to be required. Um, obviously LED helps to significantly reduce the level of maintenance which is required. Um, but because it's such an important thing and that can accrue such a high cost, um, considering ease of maintenance is, is really important, especially in the in the, the nature of the hazardous area application. So yeah, definitely a fine line. Um, you know the the fact that LED will help to reduce that, but it's still really important to, to consider ease of maintenance and the, the costs associated with that. Okay, so there doesn't seem to be any, any more questions at this moment. Um, I will hang around for another couple of minutes um, if anyone comes to mind for anybody. Um, but thank you very much for attending. It's great to see some, some new names there. Um, so thanks very much for your time um, and hopefully you found it very useful. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.